The Ghost. The Showdown. There's no name on it. The Answers. There's no name here either. Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. So let's get straight to it. We're talking fungi today. And what you can see in front of you is something called jelly ears. Now these come from the Auricularia sea family. You usually find these growing on elder, but they can grow on other trees as well. They grow throughout the year. They're usually size-wise 7 centimeters across and about 2 to 6 centimeters broad. If you collect yourself a few, you can stick them in a stew or a soup. Uh, that's probably the best way you can utilize these as an edible. Uh, they're not poisonous, they are safe to eat. But like I say, if you try and cook them in any other way, you'll struggle. However, if you do know of another way to cook these, then leave us a comment and maybe that's something that we can look at in the future. It's a good edible and prized in China. Also, the old herbalists would use this type of fungi as a poultice for inflamed eyes. When you harvest it from the tree, you want to utilize the soft parts. As the fungi gets older, it becomes hard and brittle. So you want the softer parts, cut it in slices and then add it to soup and you want to cook it for maybe three quarters of an hour. The common jelly spot can be found on broadleaf and coniferous trees, it can be found on fence posts, in allotments, on greenhouses, especially after rain. It can be confused with coral spot, it's also not that edible. Cost benefit ratio for this fungi make it not worth harvesting. This edible mushroom used to be called the blackening baletti, but in the BMS it's now named as the ink stained baletti. It is quite scruffy on the outside when you first look at it, but as you open it up, something quite remarkable happens. As the air hits the flesh of the mushroom, it oxidizes, turning from a pale white to a pale blue, then a darker blue, and eventually the mushroom will turn black. In the UK, they can be found between July and late October. They can be found under beech trees, sweet chestnut or oak trees, and mainly they're found in uh, deciduous forest or mixed woodlands, but they also can be found in coniferous forest as well. If you look there at the change in colour, rapid change in colour, quite phenomenal really. Well, the size of it, look at the size there, huge. And the underneath, as you can see, it's like a baletti. So, very spongy like. They're easy to identify. The dry cap surface is a dirty dark brown colour sometimes cracking and turning reddish on the inside. They bruise very easily and uh, they blacken when opened, as you can see. Below the cap, the yellow spore tubes terminate in large angular pores, first yellow, occasionally pale orange, but then turn blue or black. Right, quite a huge size, that one. The size of my hand and I've got big hands. My darling is where the fairies sit down and have their afternoon tea. <laughs> Come on darling, let's go. I only eat mushrooms that I am absolutely 200% sure are safe to eat. I always inspect them for any maggots, uh, bugs or any other detritus. Make sure they're clean before I harvest them. This little beauty that I've got in my hand here is called the oyster mushroom. These can be quite tough, so you want to pick the ones that are young and fresh. And wherever these grow, you can usually gather quite a few, because they often grow in huge clusters. They're very mild to taste, so you can add these to soups or stews. Uh, you can fry them up. I like to fry them in butter, and just add normal seasoning. But you can also add them to a batter, uh, just one egg, a cup of flour and so forth, and also add breadcrumbs and other seasonings. They're easy to identify. They've got a flat, moist, slate blue cap, sometimes downy when young. As you can see, the stem's usually two to three centimetres and about 10 to 20 millimetres wide. The cap can be between five to 18 centimetres in width. They're fan-shaped with an inrolled margin. The gills radiate from the attachment and are a white straw-like colour. It grows in overlapping clusters and lives on dead tree stumps, logs, 
uh, broadleaf trees and also on conifer trees. You usually find them late autumn and winter time. If you find some that are an olive colour and are slimy, then steer away because they can give you an upset stomach. So this looks like a birch bulletti, but it isn't a bulletti because it's it's got gills like this. And as you can see there, you can see some of the spores. Should be able to see some of the spores. It's a bit wet at the moment, but coming off. And that's the uh, the cap, which isn't a dome uh, cap in a sense, but it has got a stipe like the birch bulletti. And I'm not over familiar with this one. I think it's a deer shield. Uh, they are edible, but apparently they're not that tasty. It smells a little bit like a radish, and uh, on research it does look a little bit like the deer shield. The gills are free from the stem, they're quite compact and white in colour, and as they age they go a pinky flesh colour. The stem is streaked with uh, brown fibres and goes more bulbous near the base. If you're not 200% sure of what the fungi is, what the mushroom is, then leave it be. You can harvest it and maybe take a sample home to do your research and that's what I did with this one. Brought it home, did some research and uh, got a bit more knowledge. And for me it's not really a choice edible. Now this little mushroom here is quite interesting. It's from the Amanita family and they're quite rare. Often mistaken for the grey spotted Amanita. This is the panther cap. It too has warts and an ochre brown cap. And both species are poisonous. As you can see there, it's got the white gills with a skirt on it. And then you've got the, what looks like um, warts about to appear. And then you've got the bulbous, very, very bulbous uh, base. So you've got the collar or skirt, the white gills and beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful specimen but this is definitely something to avoid, uh, part of the uh, Amanita family. It's not the Amanita muscaria, I'm not sure which one it is but I will do some research, I just know it's not an edible because it's got the signs there and that is one the bulbous base you've got the skirt on top there or the uh, it's not exactly a vulva but the collar and then you've got the white gills so it's definitely amanita it might be a panther it's very very um, brown beautiful very enticing but a small portion of this can be fatal the blusher Amanita rubescens is very similar and bruises when you touch it, where the grey spotted Amanita and the panther cap don't. And it's said to be edible, but I'm not willing to take that chance, I'm not an expert. So like this one in my hand, I'll steer clear. Nearby I found this little cluster in the uh, early stages of development, with part of one of them being chewed. So if you find something like this, it's always worth taking into consideration other animals. That may be a rodent that you found dead and you plan to eat. It may have been poisoned. Reggie or others that keep guard for you at night. This is a little beauty, it's called the Scarlet Elf Cup. I believe it does hold some medicinal properties and is edible. A beautiful specimen, very distinct in colour as you can see. And I believe when it releases its spores, it actually makes a popping sound. These are a bit young yet. The fruits appear between early winter and early spring. A similar type of fungus is the orange peel fungus. Similar type of shape, but they are larger and they tend to grow in the soil, whereas the elf cup grows on fallen twigs and branches. If you look on the inside of the cup, it's very, very, as you can see, scarlet red, and on the outside, it's a lighter red colour. It's difficult to see here because the camera's going blurry. On the outside, it's a softer red colour and leaves a white spore print. I believe tribes used them in the past to help stop bleeding. So as we get into the end of the video guys, we come to the last but not least fungi of one of my favourites and that is Chicken of the Woods. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, it's a fungi definitely worth knowing. I've done a full video on this from harvest to cooking in the pot with other ingredients. Check that video out guys, 
I'm sure you'll like it. As far as this video is concerned, I hope you've learned something. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it entertaining. And I hope you would like to share it with someone. So subscribe if you haven't done already. Share with your friends. Press the bell. And take care of yourselves when you're out there searching for mushrooms, guys. Because it, it can be dangerous stuff. Even the experts get it wrong. So forage safely. Until next time, guys. You take care. And I'll see you on the next Hookfin Bushcraft.